you have your Bibles tonight, you want to read with me uh, from Hebrews chapter 6. Very briefly, I want to share some thoughts with you about the word hope. We live almost in a hopeless society. Everywhere you turn, people are looking for hope. That's what they're really looking for because so much seems hopeless. And I want to tell you, sometimes as Christians, we become hopeless also. But I just want to share with you these three brief thoughts. And I'm going to read, begin reading in uh, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 11. And we desire that every one of you to show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end. Now, the preceding verses of this chapter have just dealt with the fact that is it possible for a person to be saved and lost? And the admonition to the Hebrews, because that's the name of the book, primarily to, to that group of people, was that your actions need to show what's really in your heart. In other words, if you're saved, you'll not only know it, but you'll show it. And so the verse continues that you be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. For when God made promise to Abraham because he could not swear, for when God made promise to Abraham because he could swear by no greater, he swear by himself saying, surely blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying, I will multiply thee. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Speaking about Abraham's obtained the promise from God. For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. Wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil whether the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus made a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Hope, a possibility. That's what <clears throat> you'll discover if you read the many definitions of a dictionary. Hope, you hope so. But the second kind of hope I want to talk about is the hope of promise. Abraham believed God, and the scripture says it was counted to him for righteousness. Now, the only evidence he had was the very personal relationship with God himself. He had no Bible. He had no Old Testament. He, he had no records. He, he had no New Testament. Jesus the Messiah had not come. I want to tell you, it was a matter of faith. I mean, he was out on a limb, but there was no place else to turn. And he claimed he believed the promises of God. And the scripture says that because of that, Abraham endured because he had hope in the God that promised. And I want to tell you, all the way through the scripture, you can read about the promises of God. You can see the promises of God. And we need to read them. We need to hear them. Because we need to know that our hope is secure in the promises of God. The last thing I want to say is this. Hope is not a possibility. Hope is a promise, but hope is also a person. Hope is Jesus. And if you read the scripture, hope will jump out 
of every verse almost. I mean, it'll thrill your heart. If you're in doubt, if you're hopeless, let me tell you, pick up the, live, the, pick up the written word because the written word will not only introduce you to the living word, but it will fill your heart with faith and you will have hope because Jesus is our hope. The government's not our hope. This is, sounds kind of political, but the news media is not our hope. <laughs> Jesus is our hope. Yeah. And I want to tell you, God has blessed us in this place. He has protected us. He has brought us a long, long way. And our hope is in nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Amen. And we're going to sing that tonight, okay? I'm not going to sing a solo. But it happens, it happens to be number 526. And you know we do have hymnals. I mean, we, sometimes we get lazy. We don't even have to bend over to pick up a, a, a hymnal. It's up here, but not tonight. 526. All right, we even have an accompaniment. Five hundred twenty six. It is? Oh. I thought I was brilliant. I knew what key it was in. Of course I played the B flat trumpet. Yeah. I do not. Stand please. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest fruit, but only lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. Y'all know what this means? Fourth stanza. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. 